Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at ChainTUTS.com. And today we're going to be talking about blockchain network forks. This is a topic that often comes up in the cryptocurrency space, especially with the emergence of new cryptocurrencies that come uh, with a shared history of old ones, such as Bitcoin Cash from Bitcoin, or Ethereum Classic from Ethereum. But there's more to hard forks than just creating new currencies that split off of others, and so I wanna explain uh, what actually happens during a blockchain fork and a couple of the different kinds that can occur. First, we need to understand a little bit about what a blockchain actually is. Fundamentally, a blockchain is a publicly shared ledger of cryptocurrency transactions. So when you send value to somebody else or execute a smart contract, you create a transaction that the rest of this globally distributed network has to validate. So miners and nodes work together to look at new transactions, make sure they follow protocol rules, and add them to new blocks that are added to the chain. A block is a batch processing of these transactions, and blocks are linked backward in history to help maintain the security of the chain using cryptography. But the important thing to note is about following the rules. Bitcoin and other distributed public cryptocurrencies don't have any central management. There's no corporations or governments that decide what transactions are valid and invalid. And so in order for this network to work in a decentralized way, we use a special protocol called the Bitcoin protocol to determine what the rules are. And miners and nodes looking at the blockchain validate transactions and ensure that they're all following the rules. But what happens if the rules change? This is a part of what happens when blockchain forks happen. So let's talk about the first kind of fork, and that is the most common or most publicly known fork, known as a hard fork. These are also sometimes referred to as contentious hard forks, and these are the kind of hard forks that create new cryptocurrencies. This happens when the community surrounding a particular protocol or crypto coin disagrees on what the rules should be for the protocol. So for example, uh, in the Bitcoin community, there was a large, very contentious disagreement that happened around uh, 2017 about whether or not the block size should be increased. Uh, the side of the Bitcoin chain uh, following the Bitcoin Core reference node implementation uh, disagreed with increasing the block size over one megabyte and instead introduced segregated witness or SegWit as a way to help deal with blockchain con get congestion. However, the community surrounding what would become Bitcoin Cash really wanted to see an increase in the block size. This dispute couldn't be amicably resolved. And so now we have two different parts of the community that want to have two separate sets of protocol rules. So what happened was a contentious hard fork. You have some nodes on the network following Bitcoin Core and the Bitcoin Core rules of the protocol and you now have new node implementations such as Bitcoin ABC or Bitcoin Unlimited that want to follow the Bitcoin Cash rule set. Because these rule sets are not compatible with each other, when Bitcoin Cash nodes came online at the right time, this created a split in the blockchain. So up until then, those Bitcoin chains were all one Bitcoin. They followed one history. But when the rule set changed, one uh, side of the blockchain followed the Bitcoin Cash rules, creating a new history for Bitcoin Cash transactions. The other side continued with the Bitcoin Core implementation and then followed the rules for SegWit and other new uh, rules that were added to Bitcoin Core over time. This created two separate cryptocurrencies with one shared history up until this point of the split. The next type of fork that sometimes happens is what is called a soft fork. And this happens uh, in order to upgrade some rules on the network while maintaining backward compatibility with older nodes. 
Bitcoin takes a very conservative development approach and likes to use soft forks as opposed to hard forks to upgrade protocol rules. So for example, segregated witness or SegWit is a soft fork change to the Bitcoin network. SegWit was developed such that newer nodes that upgrade their software will understand and validate SegWit transactions. Older nodes on the network that do not upgrade to the rule set, however, can still follow the Bitcoin chain without rejecting those blocks. They do so by seeing uh, that those SegWit transactions are anyone can spend as interpreted by these old nodes, while the rest of the majority of the network is running the SegWit rules and actually validates and enforces that those transactions are correct. This has the advantage of uh, increasing network compatibility, so you don't have to force anyone to upgrade their nodes in order to fo uh, continue following the blockchain for that cryptocurrency. The downside is soft forks often come with additional software uh, complexity. So SegWit is a fairly complicated bit of code and that sort of thing. It's often easier to add new rules to the network and just force everybody to upgrade. But you know, running a globally distributed network, there are community challenges with uh, that approach. And so again, more conservative teams like the Bitcoin Core development team prefer to take the soft fork approach. Now the final type is what's called a chain split or a hard fork that's within one cryptocurrency. This sometimes happens due to bugs. A prime example of this in the history of Bitcoin is when the Bitcoin Core software upgraded the uh, database software for the blockchain from Berkeley DB to Level DB. At this point in time, there was a problem with uh, Berkeley DB's ability to handle the larger volume of transactions that the network was starting to see. So nodes still running the Berkeley DB version were rejecting blocks that were being valid and mined by the Level DB chain. And so even though this was one cryptocurrency, there was a period until this bug was resolved where uh, one side of the blockchain was rejecting blocks that were legitimately mined by the other. Now eventually when this bug was fixed, the blockchains merged back together. And so there is now one shared history that Bitcoin is still following. The side of the chain that did not win out in mining, in this case, uh, the Berkeley DB side that kept rejecting these level DB blocks, it uh, ended up not being included in the blockchain history. These are called orphaned blocks. So these are blocks that are mined, but during this chain split period, uh, when the blockchain eventually merges back together, those blocks are not included in the history. This can also happen as well when upgrading uh, to new node software using a hard fork approach. So for example, Bitcoin Cash often uses this approach to add new features to the network. Every six months, there's a new version of the software released with some new software protocol rules. And so in order for nodes to continue following the Bitcoin Cash chain, they have to upgrade their software to do so because the older nodes will reject blocks uh, that include these new rules. There's no soft fork or backward compatibility with this type of chain split hard fork uh, implementation. So as you can see, hard forks and blockchain forks in general don't just happen to create new cryptocurrencies. Sometimes they happen fairly regularly within the course of uh, simply operating these globally distributed blockchains with things such as chain splits. It can be normal, sometimes it comes as a part of a contentious community disagreement, and sometimes even soft forks happen uh, in order to add new features with backward compatibility. I hope this tutorial has helped you understand network forks better. As always, there is a written tutorial on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this video in case you like to learn by reading instead. As always, I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and thanks for learning something new with me today.